1983, a friend of mine asked me to help him move. It was an easy thing. He lived in an apartment, didn't have a lot of stuff. He had a cool car uh, and a good stereo uh, and a couple of bongs uh, and a bed. So it was pretty easy to help him move. Uh, the payment for this was a car. He had uh, gotten a car, a couple hundred bucks uh, a few months before, tried to make it home, and uh, didn't make it. He made it as far as my house. So the car that he was giving me for free uh, ended up being at my house already. Well, that car was the scariest car I've ever owned in my life. It was a 1969 Ford Fairlane. It was a two-door hardtop. It was uh, clapped out. Uh, that's a good term for it. It was noisy. It was tired. It was rusty. It was blue. It had uh, oxidized mags, and it had uh, really cheesy uh, air shocks. So uh, I come to find out later it had air shocks because the tires in back were too wide, and if it dropped down onto the tires, it would just scrape the living hell out of the outside of them. So the tires were shot. Well, let's face it, everything was shot on this car. Best part about it, it had a 429 cubic inch V8. This was huge. Uh, this car was made for a 351, and that, in fact, it came with a 351, and the dimensions of the engines were a lot different. The original engine that came in the car uh, was a lot smaller. Uh, this 429 looked like it had been sledgehammered in. There, were, um, there, there was evidence in the, in the um, engine well that uh, someone had literally taken hammers to the uh, shock towers and the transmission tunnel to make room for this engine. The transmission, uh, because it couldn't figure out what to do with it, uh, and it didn't fit in a normal spot, was put on the outside. So they had removed the grill and everything that held the hood down. So the hood, how did the hood stay closed? Rope. Uh, tied to the bumper. Yeah. So when I got it, it was noisy. It uh, was, uh, it, it didn't drive very straight. It overheated anywhere you drove it. Uh, but it was really, really powerful. Uh, bit by bit, I was able to fix it here and there. I got an exhaust system for it. I moved the radiator so I could actually uh, uh, close the hood normally. And luckily for me, all the uh, equipment to use to keep the hood closed, all the latches and stuff was in the trunk. So I was able to reinstall everything and put it all back together so it at least looked civil. Uh, it would only run on one kind of gas, premium. Now, in 1983, that's not such a big deal because in, in 1983, premium was 80 cents a gallon, something like that. So, not a big deal. It also had a distributor. Uh, the, the, point, the points and distributor, was, it was a dual point design, uh, very old school, uh, very race worthy, and uh, very, very difficult to uh, adjust. One day, I decided it was time to do a tune-up because I could hardly keep the thing running. It was going pop, 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 pop. It, it would not run smoothly, not to save my life ever. So I got into the hood. I uh, replaced the spark plugs. That took uh, two and a half hours by itself because uh, two or three of them, I had to finagle them. I could have used an extra couple of, uh, of fingers because there was no room between the uh, spark plugs and the shock towers. Uh, the distributor, uh, I really didn't know what to do with that. I read up on on adjusting dual point distributors and it scared me. It, quite frankly, it scared me because they had all these terms that I didn't understand. I, I didn't, I couldn't even fathom what it would take to do this until I popped open the cap, took a screwdriver out and adjusted them on a whim and the car ran. To this day, I still can't figure out how it, how it happened, but I never touched it again because I was actually too afraid to. So eventually, uh, the blue paint was covered over with black primer. Uh, the inside was uh, had no carpet. The shifter, because the shifter that was actually on the, um, on the column didn't work. It wouldn't hook up to the, the transmission that was in the car. So someone had cut a hole in the, in the floor and it took a piece of rod and stuck it straight to the transmission. Uh, so you shifted by um, pulling all the way back to go into park and pushing all the way forward to go into first gear. 
it was completely ass backwards compared to what you would normally do. And it was hooked directly to the transmission. Of course, hot air coming off the exhaust would go straight in through the hole and, well, keep you warm when it got cold outside. But that really didn't matter much because when you close the driver's door, the window would fall down into the door. So, and the heater didn't work anyway. You know, like I said, clapped out. The thing that made this car scary is it had so much torque and it had so much power and it had so much speed that uh, safety-wise, it would it would not be even. Uh, I couldn't imagine driving it at the speeds that I drove it at now. Uh, when I drove it fast, stuff flew out of the out of the defroster. Uh, it made a lot of noise and it didn't drive very straight because the front end was completely shot. I had adjusted a few times and I managed to get it to drive straight, but then it would only work for about 500 miles and I'd have to get under there and adjust it again. Of course, it was uh, thirsty. I would uh, fill it up every, every week with premium fuel and, uh, and drive it some more. It never really did get me in a lot of trouble except for uh, one night when I could keep it driving straight and I did get pulled over. Uh, the cop thought I was drunk. I wasn't. I explained to him why, uh, why the why I was uh, swerving. It's because the tires would catch a groove and uh, it would go whoop like that, whoop like that, everywhere. It was a uh, it, it was a scary car to drive. Well, I finally convinced him that it wasn't me. It was the car, and he advised that I get it fixed. Eventually, uh, about a year later, uh, I just could not keep it. I, I couldn't keep it drivable. It was it would break down too much, and I finally just had to park it. Uh, that was all right because uh, my dad and I started thinking about getting another car, a, a Thunderbird, or something big that we could put the engine in and make a you know do a project. Because the one good thing about that car is what the 429 was was clean and it worked great. So we thought, well, we'll find a big Ford and we'll put the 429 in it. Good idea. We found a Thunderbird for a hundred dollars hauled it home, and started taking the engine and transmission out of the fair lane. Eventually, I got everything apart, uh, took as many parts off the car as I could, and then I called Lincoln Auto Wrecking and had him tow the rest away for free. That was a nice summer day in 1984, and that was the scariest car I've ever owned.